Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Sunday live stream. Uh, as as usual, I got my buddy Jerry Hall to, in today. Jerry, thanks for stopping by. Good to be here, Rob, as always. Yeah, man, we got a lot of stuff to go over. And of course, the reason, first of all, everybody, thanks for stopping by on a Sunday. I appreciate that. We're going to talk about, there was a, it was a, it was a tweet and it talks about some inside trader. Well, not really inside trader, but someone who had uh, privy knowledge about what was going on behind the scenes as everything was starting to collapse especially in the 2020 bull run. And for me personally, I always felt like we kind of got screwed out of a proper bull run. And uh, I think this is kind of uh, eye-opening. But before we get into that, of course, uh, you can follow uh, Jerry on on X and he's got uh, loads of information. He's got to start doing some more YouTube videos, but I know he's busy uh, in Costa Rica doing living his sweet life. And then also, there's a link in the description. If you guys want to do this right now, we're giving away... Uh, for to four random people, uh, 50 hypercycle tokens. And there's a tweet uh, that will or a post comments. It's actually in the description. You can find this on X. All you got to do is like, comment, repost, follow hypercycle, follow Jerry Hall. And we're going to do this live today. So first of all, before we get into this stuff, which I found fascinating because I always like to get like insider information of what really went on behind the scenes because no one talks about this stuff as it's actually happening. Before we go to that, let me commend Jerry for having a stable internet connection in Costa Rica. Jerry, first of all, how'd you do that? Because last time it was, it was like you were max headroom. Well, okay. So in Costa Rica, you have limited options, right? You, you have what you can get. Mm -hmm. And Last year, Elon and his company Starlink got Starlink. authorized to do business in Costa Rica. And mm -hmm. in January of this year, they actually started rolling out the hardware to connect to the Starlink system. And so I now have Starlink. Fingers crossed that uh, we have an entire stream without any. <laughs> oh, Jerry, you're frozen. <laughs> Jerry, you're frozen. That's great. So, like, I didn't know they actually rolled this out. So, I was always curious to like the what are the startup costs and what are you paying per month as opposed to what you were paying per month. Okay, so fair enough. So what I was paying for bef um, previous to this was a microwave line of sight system that yeah. had uh, about a hundred dollar U.S. setup fee okay. and forty dollars a month. Okay, and it was intermittent. I mean, it it was not great. And that now was the was best. Starlink. That was the best, right? That was the best I could get where I am. I'm not in a city. If you're in a city, you can get high speed internet pretty easily from the fiber optic stuff. And that generally would run you $45 a month for a decent fiber optic internet connection. Okay. Okay. Up here, where I'm at, the Starlink costs $300 in equipment. And equipment, one time cost, right? One time cost in equipment. Now I own the equipment. And then. $60 a month for the actual subscription service. And some of the incredible stuff about this, Rob, is through the Starlink app, I can I can on-demand speed testing. I know, I know how I'm doing, and I can reposition my satellite on various elements of my property for optimal for optimal coverage. It's been it's been a wonderful month playing okay. with the Starlink system. I love it. That's crazy. Cause well, first of all, like, cause you're in Costa Rica. So I'm going to, I'm going to assume, and I, of course you should never do that, but like, ah, uh, damn, thanks. You go on. I would assume that in different locations is different prices. Like Mr. Q sure. is 85 bucks a month. I've heard different places saying hundred bucks a month, 120 bucks a month, but in Costa Rica, 60 bucks a month, which is only 15 bucks more. I gotta tell you, it's pretty good. It's really good. Now, what, what I'm curious downstream because I honestly believe the theory that World Mobile Token put out yeah. that connectivity creates productivity. Yeah, right, right, right. And so I'm curious as the world gets more adapt to on demand connection anywhere, anywhere on the planet, what that will do for productivity on the planet. I'm hoping nothing but good things. I, well, I, I mean, I think so. And that, that's, that's the whole idea is, you know, we have, there's massive resources out there. There's, there's people that have unknown talent that we don't, we don't 
understand or we don't know what they're doing. There's there's probably 30 more Picassos out there, but unfortunately, because they're in third world countries, we can't connect to them. They can't get to us, and you know we see. And then of course, there's brilliant people out there that just can't come in because they are unconnected. And that's the whole thing with like what Elon is trying to do and trying to bring everybody together and talks about you know repopulating and so on and so forth. That's a whole other video. How about this? Let's talk about this piece right here. Yes. Yeah, because I know people are like, get to the point, Rob. I'm like, okay, fine. So this was uh, was retweeted by uh, my buddy Steve, who or Steven, who owns the uh, San Juan Smokehouse, where we do all the different meetups here in Puerto Rico, which Jerry, I hope that you're at at some point. And he retweeted this from David Choi. And this is the this was number 24. It says, in the market today, we are seeing 35 billion of grayscale gray uh, Bitcoin being sold. It's really the last thing left of the 2021 cycle. It's come full circle. And that just got my attention. I'm like, what is he talking about? This is what he's talking about. And again, so we know that this, when we had the spot Bitcoin ETF, everybody had their assumptions. And their assumptions were this is going to be the biggest thing of all time. In the first 24 hours, we're going to see Bitcoin. I heard crazy things of it going to 100,000. I heard crazy things of it's going to actually crash to below 10,000. And everything in the middle. And one thing in the market I can tell you is that when you think you know what's going to happen, it does the exact opposite. And one of the reasons is, is because the shenanigans that are going on behind the scenes by big whales and players. And this kind of pulls back that curtain about what's going on. So this is David Choi. He's building uh, Ministry XYZ. He's an angel investor. And this is what he talks about. He says he lost 700K in a single trade, and I was lucky. In 2021, is known as the Widowmaker trade, the single reason for all the blowups. 3AC or Three Arrows Capital, BlockFi, Silvergate, FTX, and down the line, also Voyager and Celsius. Everything is interconnected. And because of the things that happened here, I believe is why we actually got screwed again out of a proper bull run. And I think that's why this bull run is going to be so much better than the one before. But again, markets have a way of kicking you right in the teeth. David says, this is the perspective of an insider that went through this hellhole of a trade. At the very end, the trade's was net down negative 38%, which doesn't seem too bad. But as things went forward, some were down negative 1,000%, the original investment and forced to repay. So this is what he he shows us. And this to me, well, I, I'll just have him say it. Chart above shows two metrics, <coughs> the premium or discount and the shares unlock. So with Grayscale, what you were able to do essentially was, was buy Bitcoin at a premium or at a discount, whatever you want to call it. And essentially, you could buy one Bitcoin, but it's actually worth 1.3. And then when you could unlock it, the actual shares, you could, go, you could go spend those or trade those or sell those. And people had to buy your bags, essentially. And you were making money hand over fist. Jerry, what, is that how, how you remember it? Uh, That's exactly like how it went. So when, when the Grayscale Trust was formed, the only people that could actually buy shares in it were accredited investors. Oh, okay? the big and that people. was. Not the peons like us. Not us. Well, not you, the plebs. Well, you know, yeah. You had to be an accredited investor. So what you know, you put whatever title you want on that. <laughs> so, but they bought it and there were conditions, right? You buy it, there's a lockup period. When the lockup period is over, then then you can allocate that at whatever the OTC prices of that were at the time that you wanted to do it. OTC is where guys like you and I could, through our Schwab account or our Fidelity account or TD Ameritrade, what have you, we could go in and buy OTC shares of GBTC. Yeah. Well, when the market is raging, this is really good because what ends up happening is Bitcoin gets appropriated into the fund. Shares get allocated, shares get purchased. Now, there was a one-way valve on that. The fund holding the Bitcoin had a one-way ticket. It was a one-way ride. Bitcoin in, Bitcoin never out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, Even mm -hmm. though investors could shell their shares after their lockup period. And what that started to do as the, as the trust had some life, some legs behind it, some time had went by, you start getting people starting to arbitrage yeah. with the actual value of the OTC shares versus the amount of Bitcoin in the trust relative to the trading price of Bitcoin on, let's say, Coinbase or, or whatever 
exchange that you were going to use as a, as a pricing mechanism for your arbitrage. Really crafty stuff, but it hurt a lot of people. I mean, a lot of people are very rich, but it also hurt a lot of people too. Yeah. Well, speaking of which, let's talk about who got hurt and that's us. So again, premium discount. This is particularly interesting because a lot of the unlocks you see, a lot of the unlocks you see this week came from the period where money was locked two or three years ago. Yeah. So again, if, if you had this locked up and you're like, all right, I got all this stuff. And you're like, I want to get the hell out of this thing. That's where you dump, right? You dump because you're like, hey, I'm up. And that's what you know we do. But then he says, let's try this from the very beginning. What the F was this trade? It's well known in the institutional crypto world. Jump, Jane, DRW. Remember jump. It was this anomaly where grayscale Bitcoin was valued at a lot higher than the Bitcoins it held. Every one Bitcoin was worth 1.3, which is what you were saying, Jerry. This is because Bitcoin was hard to access for a lot of folks. I mean, it wasn't hard for us, but the people that aren't used to it, I guess it was very difficult. I don't understand why, but I, I understand if, if you have millions and millions of dollars, you probably don't want to self-custody it because you're like, man, if I lose this piece of paper, I just lost 10 million that's bucks. That's exactly why. Yeah. Yeah I, yeah, I get it. How do we make money here? Well, you give Grayscale a Bitcoin and then you get Grayscale Bitcoin after a year or whatever time frame it was, actually was. Then you sell the Grayscale Bitcoin, the equities, which we just talked about. Of course, as I said, it's a one-year wait, but the premium had never been negative, not once. And sometimes the premium went nuts. Like, imagine this, 800% premium. People are making money hand over fist at this point, but then it kind of went down the tubes. So we, and a lot of other people decided we should do this trade. It looks decent. We've heard some folks make decent returns, 15 to 20X after a year. Again, we're, they were using crypto as their own piggy bank. They were using Bitcoin as their own piggy bank, essentially. But it wasn't the underlying asset. It was just the traders and the greed that was going on. This is how the trade worked to be hedged. You got a million in cash, deposit it. Then you borrow 3 million in Bitcoin, BlockFi, deposit 3 million in Bitcoin in Grayscale, wait six months, make buku money. Let's just, let's just pause there and appreciate the amount of degeneracy that's going on right there. So like when everybody's telling you like these things, like where you say like, hey, you know, you should really diversify and, you know, really, you know, be careful about that. And of course, you know, you've got uh, uh, good old Gary Gensler talking about, you know, you should really be understanding of, of what's going on in disclosures to make sure there are people that are in the system that are just doing the most biggest gambles you can possibly see. I don't know how you see it, Jerry, but that's how I kind of take a look at this. Yeah, derivatives, derivatives, derivatives. They, it, it, it's this, it's this onion that even those who've gotten kind of, you know, through several of the layers, there's like 500 more layers. I mean, it is. You're right. <laughs> you're, that term, the degeneracy, <laughs> is so appropriate because that's exactly what it is. That, that's exactly what it is. Yeah, degeneracy. So let's so let's finish this out. So people can get it. So, okay. So you 3X, the principle is very low for the market where the average of this trade was 5 to 20X, Jane jump, crypto funds, blah, blah, A 5% down payment, that's not bad because of uh, Twitter presence and of course all the S posting. Who does due diligence? Well, nobody does. We did 3X, one of the lower rates. In 2021, I remember everyone asking me, wow, BlockFi has high yield, should I deposit? This should have been our warning sign. And of course, when you see high yields, you should be like, why is your yield so high? Where's the money coming from? I fell victim to this as well. So I will stand up and say I screwed up as well. In 2021, I remember, wow, Bitcoin ETH are pumping. Why that happen? From $300 ETH to $2,000 ETH. They were both related. They both were fueled by this trade. We only did ETH in a one month in the trade. It happened the first time. The premium was a discount. Remember that math? 30% premium. Well, now it's negative 30%. Then if you borrow that, you got negative 90% less interest. So life turned to hell. I knew I should have stuck with the MEV. I even sold my ETH at 300 bucks for this trade. The discount wasn't high yet. It was only negative 1% in February, 2021. But as, of course, the, as the price went up, everything else went up. The real issue was actually the interest cost. Please, please, because remember you are borrowing against your cash. This is the under collateralized or no collateralized. And this is one of the things that Voyager did. They took a massive, they gave a loan to Three Arrows Capital of 630 or $640 million uncollateralized, essentially from a piece of paper that said, hey, we got it. Actually, it probably just said, trust us, bro. That's probably what it said. And they gave them all the money because they believed in them. And then because of that, they lost all because this widow maker trade. And this is where everything goes 
to S. I called every lender counterparty who we were dealing with and begged to get some interest relief. They knew we were, and everyone else in the trades in the red. The worst part, ETH was pumping. So as ETH went up, the interest went up too. Over the next few months, we got negative six, then negative four on a three X position, about negative 13. We also prepaid the interest of the hedge against the ever pumping ETH. The weight was brutal. Everything went down. May 21st, update FFF. What can we do? We even did the NASDAQ to ETH correlation analysis. Why is it negative? We tried to figure this out. So why did the premium turn to a discount? It was just a ton of products and knowledge. Folks realized that they should just buy on Coinbase. <laughs> That's just it. Folks realized they should just buy on Coinbase and not with their IRA via Grayscale Bitcoin. Yeah. Because that's what you could do. And now, of course, people are going this other route and they're trying to get out of Grayscale. They're dumping it for fees that are a lot less than Grayscale and getting into like uh, the Fidelities and the Black Rocks and things like that. So people are dumping and going over uh, on the other side. Whoops. What am I doing? All right. Uh, every day invested, we got on, we sold every share we could. Unlock, transfer, dump. Unlock, transfer, dump. Unlock, transfer, dump. That's why you saw there was a big, big, massive dump in April and things went down it kind of corrected. It went back up and what they do again, they dumped on us. And that's just how it goes. The market absorbed our ETH shares quite well. Who the F was buying this? Doesn't matter. We got our 4% discount. Why didn't we hold? One of the lenders came back to us. Hey, you want to try this basis trade? And even after that, they still try to do it again. And he said, uh -huh. no, this fund is done. We're going to do this again. Now that's when the discount was 4 to 8%. Where did the discount hit at the bottom? Negative 55%. And I guarantee the people that were like the degenerates, the real three arrows capital, they try to write it all the way down. What would have happened if we kept going? Interest would have piled up 100%. ETH could have gone higher, another 10X. We could have borrowed 10X. And of course, if you borrowed against it, then you're going to be stuck with negative 50%. Now multiply that by negative 1, 50, 10, 10, 100%. We walked away. In the market today, we're seeing 35 billion of grayscale being sold. No FTX, no overload of leverage, no systemic risk. Oh, no, no, here, I want to see this one. This is really the last thing left of the 2020, 2021 cycle. It's come full circle. The market is slowly absorbing all this toxic baggage, but many of the institutional grifters are gone, but they'll be back again. No FTX, no overload, no systemic risks. risks. Folks complain about the lack of innovation, but I see an open, innocent plane you know what to solve this? If we just had an F redeemable ETF in 2021, I disagree. I think what really would have solved this is if there wasn't been so much degeneracy going on, but I could be wrong. Jerry, how'd you like that story? I love that story. I really did. Cause I, I'm, I was not privy to that. I was not brought into any, any inner circle that said, Hey, you know, this is what we're doing. And, <laughs> and uh, what's going you know on over what I mean? here? Bam over here. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I I find it uh, not surprising. The question that I have, what's the next, not the next shoot to drop, but what's the next degenerate play that traditional finance is going to bring into our circle to screw us over again? That's, I think, what we really should be concerned with. Because to me, it's very basic, right? Me, me and you, Jerry, are the same way. Like, we get into projects, we buy our Bitcoin, we buy whatever, we hold on to it for quite some time. We see how it goes, we follow it. We make sure it's a, still you know, progressing and we plan accordingly. And that's pretty much it. We're not doing a lot of things behind the scenes. It just kind of makes sense. And I think the only thing that you can really do these days because how many people are behind the scenes screwing everything up is really like a, a buy and hold approach and see where things go. Well, you asked a really good question. Where, where are some of the next potential pitfalls? Right. Yeah. And if we look at history, especially the history of commodities, because this is Bitcoin at its core is a commodity. Yeah. Right. I mean, it, it is. So, let, so when I look at it, I'm thinking, OK, potential fit pitfalls that laws get passed that allow rehypothecation of these digital assets. So all mm. that same foolery yeah. they yeah. did with yeah. gold. Right. And oil. And, and some of these other ones, if that same shit happens to, to become legal in this world, all the transparency in the world will not trump human greed. True. You know what I mean? And so so that's what I, I'm hoping. I'm hoping we don't do that. I'm hoping we don't 
passed leg uh, legislation that allows the rehypothecation of Bitcoin. Well, so so Jerry, for the products like that, you know, or create this whole world of Franken Franken assets, you know, Frankenstein yeah. type assets that aren't necessarily the real underlying asset. There's some Franken Frankenstein version, uh, three times removed, but yet somehow legally tethered for for legitimacy purposes. You know what I mean? That, that kind of crud. Yeah, kind of crud. Hey, real quick, just just break it out down to people for banks and rehypothecation how that how that kind of works these days and well, why the, we don't want that it's okay so if you're if you're hip to money at all then you kind of understand what um fractional reserve banking has done to money yeah. fractional reserve banking has allowed banks to create money when loans with no backing or or without the one to one backing to substantiate the loan so that has created this tenuous monetary policy. When you start rehypothecating assets like gold, like Bitcoin, and you can have five claims for the same Satoshi or five claims for the same ounce of gold, then who is the true owner, owner of that, right? It gets really murky when you want to cash out. When you are just having it sit as a number on your portfolio, it, nobody seems to care. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? But it, when it's time to collect, that's that's when the, the musical chairs thing happens. And that's how that's the kind of the simple analogy I bring to that is yeah. musical chairs. Now, oh, you remember when Cyprus didn't have enough money to handle the, the yeah. customer demand for the withdrawals and they actually created a bank holiday shut every bank down right mm. shut every bank down and then implemented a law that was on their books to bail in by oh, yeah 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 by yeah, taking yeah. customer funds and 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 using them so between fractional reserve banking rehypothecation as a legitimate way to do business and laws that are on the books to like their patriot laws right as a citizen of the of the state, you will help bail us out of financial trouble. Right. The government being a those three things are horrible for us, and we should all be very aware of what our jurisdiction has on the books for those kind of things and try to abolish them because they're they're heinous to us. I'm gonna tell you, it's scary, but that's why like I, I treasure these times right now before yeah. the tourists get in. Like everybody here, every, you watching right now, you're not a tourist, you've been here for quite some time. The tourists are coming and I'm dreading that day because, <laughs> because they're the ones that, I mean, I'd love to educate them, but we know how this goes, right? You're gonna get a massive in influx of people, 5% are gonna get it, the other 95% will like number go up and that's pretty much it. And this is the thing that, that, that scares me. There's a way that things are, should be, and there's a way that things are gonna be. And I always talk about that. And one of the things of, I, I see how it how it should be, cold storage, you own it. You don't have any any middleman, there's no intermediary. You can use it as as a, uh, um, a method of finance. You can you can transfer, you can do whatever you want with your with your Bitcoin, your crypto, because you personally own it because it's in cold storage. Now we see with like an ETF and there's people that actually hold it. Here's the next question then, because as banks are starting to not just collapse, but close their brick and mortar stores. We've seen that it was like a 30% slowdown over the last year from, from this year. We know that they are actually hurting a little bit as far as their numbers. That's why I think they're trying to get into like a little bit of this crypto digital asset storage and go, hey, we can help, we can, we can facilitate that, we can do that. And just like what you said, when the banks get in, you know what they're gonna do. Well, I got one Bitcoin. You know what, thanks John. I know that uh, Jane would like to have 0 0.9 Bitcoin. I'll just lend it out to her. And then rehypothecation comes again or fractional reserve banking. Eh, not a, all I'm going to say is this. I'm glad everybody understands how to do this cold storage. If you don't, there is a great wallet I have. It's called Tangem. There's also a free website I have. It's called Dan Teaches Crypto. And I show you exactly how to do it. It takes you five minutes. That's about it. Anything else to add, Jerry, as I scare everybody to death? Well, <laughs> It's interesting that you see the tourists are coming. The tourists, a lot of new people are going to come. But I'm I'm of the thinking that I would rather have them come to Dan 
yeah, you know, digital asset news and and get a perspective of somebody who has come through it as like a brother versus a mm. um uh, an, yet another participant as a product by the by a big corporation, right? Yeah. So well, that's, that's true. I just I'm just drawing the day because I know it's coming. Ah, who is this boomer telling me to hold on to Bitcoin? Bitcoin doesn't do squat. This does everything. This is the new Bitcoin, Bitcoin potato or something. I don't know what it is. All right. So that's, <laughs> that's a good piece. Let's talk about uh, portfolios. Again, uh, we can't give financial advice. We're not financial advisors. Definitely not your dad's. But I do like to, to throw this out there. This is Ben's website in the Cryptoverse. And uh, we've been kind of tracking this since September of 2022. Historically, September is a awful month, not just for Bitcoin and crypto in general, but also for traditional markets. For whatever reason, it was actually a great month. So it kind of went against what I was trying to show everybody, which is if you go down, it's okay. Just stick around, it'll change. So I'm taking a look at Bitcoin, just putting in 10 bucks a day. And also doing the same thing with Ethereum, Solana, Cardano, AVAX, Dogecoin, Polkadot. Matic, ICP, Adam, Near, Arbitrum, and Stacks. I just wanted to add. I added Stacks and, and ICP just to show people. Um, actually, let me change this. This is wrong. Not December 30th. Let's go to September 1st to today. Because I know like when we're in the bear market, everybody thinks that's it. The bear market's going to last forever. And then we're in the bull market, everybody thinks the exact opposite. We're in the bull market, it's going to last forever. Now, here we are. So just 10 bucks a day, you can see that... <sighs> I don't know why September was such a good month. But usually in September, ah, there we go. That's where I like it. Usually you're in the negative, right? And that's okay. You're in the negative. Everybody's happy. Uh, well, actually, people aren't happy. They're like, oh, well, that's okay. You just keep sticking around, right? You don't know what the what the big whales are doing. You just dollar cost average, get in some, some products. Some suck for a while, like near. I was down for like forever. But I think it's got a it's got a great team. It's got a great product. And, uh, you know, I thought it'd do pretty well. And then as we get farther into it, today, at the peak this and Christmas, if you would have put in, again, you would have invested $1,000, again, 10 bucks a day in a Solana, you'd be up 278%, AVAX, 269. And Bitcoin, actually, you're only up 35% at this point. Let's come over here to today. Whoops, let's go back a couple of days. Uh, Bitcoin, you're only up 30%. And uh, crazy enough, ICP, Internet Computer Protocol, you're up 180%. Solana, 173, AVAX, 150, and so on and so forth. So remember, this is before the actual halving. So I think uh, there's still a lot of room to run. We are, I think we are way ahead of schedule. Jerry, what do you think here? Any, you any know, plays? Well, I'll tell you, you know, so you know how, and you do this very well, you, you look at historical patterns, Right, you're looking at patterns, trying to kind of like rhyme or reason what why. One of the things I've been trying to get my mind around are the business cycle. There's a thing; it's an actual thing, the business cycle, in in how the ebb and flow of expansion and contraction in financial markets, right? And it's not just in our crypto space; it's in the, the movement of capital, right? And it all all centers around the cost to borrow money, lending rates, lending every, rate. everything in the business cycle is around that as it pertains to expansion and contraction of our markets has to do with the cost to borrow money, the cost, what they call the term is cost of capital. The cost of capital is derived from like the fed, the fed overnight rate. That's a, that's a primary driver of what all those downstream lending products would be all the way from what JP Morgan would borrow money for versus what you would have your home mortgage interest rate settled at, at the time that you yeah. negotiate it with your, with your lender in that moment. So this, this element that tracks that you just looked at, we just looked at analytics that said, Hey, in September, this started to happen. Well, if, it, it's no coincidence that that happened to be where the Fed put the brakes on rate increases. Ah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And and so the rate, the Fed is kind of stabilized 
for lack of any other better terminology, they are no longer increasing rates. They're kind of on a hold. Right. So what'll be the next interesting thing, and the market's really good about pricing this into the market, is when the when the Fed does actually reverse course and, and the rates start going down. When that occurs, my friend, that will be the fourth leg of the table. Because the first leg is the is the is the door being opened, right? The Bitcoin ETF. Yeah. Although not rambunctious for Bitcoin right now, it opens the door for a lot of capital to come into Bitcoin. Just because the door is open doesn't mean people are walking through it yet, but the door is open. Then you got the FASB ruling, right? Corporations, balance sheet, digital assets, and the business cycle, right? The cost of capital. This is going to be a good year. This is going to be a fun year to watch because... The world can only take so much pain. At some point, they're going to have to bring the rate to borrow money down so that people can refinance their existing debt. Governments and corps need to refinance their debt all the time. And it's getting to the point of unbearability. It's going to be interesting to see how the next X amount of months go by. Oh, it's going to be interesting. That is for yeah. sure. Yeah, we've, we've actually taken a look at this of like when you from from pause when you when you pause rates to when you cut rates like there's an average over the last we took a look at it the last 30 years i think it would average out to like 8 9 months somewhere around there. something like that and then from when you actually cut rates to when you hit a recession you're looking at it's a very short time actually 2 to 3 months and then the recession oh. huh well i was just going to say there's an element of history that will not repeat and it's because you need very sophisticated vector math. We have never had this level of debt. And so trillion. the amount of debt mm -hmm. directly correlates to time because time is money, right? The interest you pay on a trillion dollars is True. much different than the interest you pay on a billion dollars, <laughs> even if it's 2.5%, right? Right. So we've never had this debt load before. This is going to be... This, this is the this I, in other words i am speculating that we will have a much shorter than 9 month period of time from pause to retraction based on the sheer volume of debt that needs to get recycled through where there it's 7 trillion a year needs to be refinanced and that's corporate and 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 sovereign debt loads you know, it makes a case. It makes a case because people are talking about, you know, this next bull run, it could be short, not shortened, but the time frame could be reduced instead of, you know, we hitting like a year after the halving, it could be seven months, eight months, nine months after the halving. And that would be the blow off top. Some people are expecting like 2024. Again, uh, this is a, that's a, that's a, that's a whole new video. There's indicators out there that could help us, but we'll never really perfectly no i'll never time the, the top that's why we have these rules underneath my big enormous head it says uh take some profits the Dude, rule one. number three i'm doing that this time i'm, no, the, dude, I'm yeah. the dude set on a million dollars from a twenty three thousand dollar investment i'm sitting on a million dollars eating top ramen because i you know i wanted to have generational wealth and in november of 2021 when i knew that Rob said, take profits, and I didn't, <laughs> yeah. and I didn't, and I watched all of 2022, my value just go like like a rock. <clears throat> this time is going to be, I am taking profits this time. I'm building my house this time. I am not, I'm not rolling the dice for uh, a Lamborghini or a private jet. I am just going to, I'm going to take some profit. <laughs> Uh, yeah. You know what? I, I again, like I should have taken more. I took I took a good I took a decent amount, but I screwed up and I'm not going to do that again. And of course, I've got a there's a if you want to find out when that's going to be, everybody, there's a link in the description. There's a video I'm going to sell where, where, where I'm going to sell 80 percent of my crypto and uh, go from there. And then, of course, I'm dreading the um, the tourists because they're going to tell me uh, how different I'm, it's going to be this time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's different in that, uh, you know. So anyhow. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, let's finish this up, Jerry, and we'll do a little Q&A. There was a thing I want to talk about is this one, the pooper scooper. I, this is just something fun and light, so it doesn't have to be all serious and like, this is, we got to do it this way. This was uh, put out by Bonk, 
And Bonk is one of those, they're a meme coin that did an amazing, I uh, had amazing run. And they said, hey, Poover Scooper is a community developed wallet organizer that allows users to quickly scoop all unwanted assets into Bonk to efficiently purge airdrops and adverts that clutter your wallet. I was like, ah, I'll take a look at that. And that's from the official account. They've got uh, 205,000 followers. So I said, okay, so this is the link. I linked in the description. I've never done this before. So I don't know if this is actually gonna show or not. Let me see what I can do here. So it's gonna say select wallet. Can you guys see Phantom? Yeah. All right, I'm gonna click Phantom. Can you see my Phantom wallet open up? No. Probably not. So I gotta do something special. This is gonna look kind of goofy for a second. I want everybody to see this. So let's see, stop, present. Uh, this is gonna look goofy. Okay, now can can you see Pooper Scooper? I can, yeah, I see the page and you're connecting. Okay, yep. now can you see my phantom wallet? Yes. Uh-huh, right. Show us the password so and it's the private key. keys. One, two, three, four, five, same combination of my luggage. Let's see. All right. So now, I before we do all this, everybody, just a little word of caution. Don't put your entire life savings into any hot wallet out there. That's yeah. a recipe for disaster. Some people have done that. They lost everything. I think I got like a grand in here or something like that. It's not going to crush me if something happens. These are just for funsies. And I uh, decide from there. So I'm going to click connect. All right. What the hell happened? Okay. So <laughs> look at this. I got a possible scoop of 23 something something. Oh, I see how this goes. So like you pick the, I guess the goofy stuff that's in here. So 27, cause I, Pith, Whiff, sure. Drac, I don't know what this is. Punk, I don't know what Choose that is. Choose them all. Well, I, I, wanna, I wanna keep Pith or Pith and Guac, why not? And then go from there, let's scoop it. All right. Uh, I don't know what that stuff is. All right. Unknown uh, Draco Punk Bonk coin. All right. Plus 200. Oh, that's Bonk coin. It's not Bonk. All right. Network fee 0. 0.000035. All right. <laughs> I got a token called Co F yourself. That must be from my fans. <laughs> <laughs> and cat and then cat with hat. All right. And uh no, oh, transaction's been processed. Please refresh asset. Okay. So. I guess. And what did it go into? That's the question. Well, shouldn't it have gone to your wallet and, can, and got converted into bonk? I thought that was the whole point of this exercise. Oh, same. Yeah, a little bit more. Yeah, I guess that's it. Well, sweet. So you got one hundred and forty-five dollars worth of bunk. Is that so. is that what just happened? Oh, I'll have to go look at the transactions. But uh, well, no, well, seventeen bucks, somewhere around there. Oh, is Anyhow. that what it, is that what it says? Yeah, seventeen bucks. Okay, okay. Hey. I'm sorry. It looked like it was up seventeen uh, percent it from did. where I'm sitting, but I can't see the screen like you can. I'll let everybody else play around with that. But I just want to show everybody that, hey, if things went sideways and I lost everything, it wouldn't crush me. Hot wallets are there for fun, and that's pretty much it. And then also, we need to do, Jerry, we got to give away some, some hypercycle tokens. Oh, let's give away some hypercycle tokens. Absolutely. Let's do it. All right. Let's Go see. to Rob's Twitter. 
<laughs> yeah, go to my Twitter. Well, first of all, explain to us what HyperCycle is again. Well, okay, literally HyperCycle is an AI to AI network. So it allows artificial intelligence algorithms to actually seek out other AI agents or computational resources to perform their AI computation. Okay. Pretty yeah. simple stuff. And it's optimized for speed and agility. So in a normal human brain, you have neurons firing synapses off all the time. They don't have to go to some central part of the brain to ask permission to do it. They just do it. That's how hypercycle is built. So in a normal blockchain type of situation, every transaction you get is in limbo until a block gets created and then it becomes real. Hypercycle is the opposite. Transactions yeah. occur. The, the, the transactions occur in real time, zip, 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 zip. And once enough get done, then they get sent to a Cardano side chain for, for the historical record. But it, um, this total IP protocol that we use is basically the foundation of hypercycle is it's revolutionary. So it's kind of like not a layer one, it's a layer zero plus plus kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Really fascinating. You're going to be a network, uh, node operator here shortly. Exactly. To talk yeah, that's about true. It maybe next time we meet. Maybe next time. Well, hopefully. And then yeah, yeah, I, yeah. the reason I got into it is because, like, I mean, they got some, I mean, this guy, uh, Ben, Dr. Ben Gortzel, he's from he's Singularity, right? Stud. Yeah. Yeah. And the, he's the dude behind Sophia the robot. He is uh, one of yeah. the premier, premier AI scientists on the planet. Yeah. And, and Tufi, the CEO of Hypercycle, is the guy who actually wrote the TOTA IP protocol that is allowing this AI to AI network to, to even happen. Pretty amazing stuff. Yeah. But yeah, our giveaway is we're I want to give four people 50 HYPC tokens. All you got to do is go, uh, you got to follow me and HyperCycle AI on Twitter. Go to our what is HyperCycle tweet, which is our pin tweet right to the thing. Retweet it. Make a comment, tag three of your friends who you think should learn about HyperCycle, and I will go through those. I will find four people, and I will ask them in a private message for their, you know, deposit ERC-20 address, and I will send them 50 tokens. Let's see. All right, I'm grabbing my, my thing so we can... And you'll be able to send me the results of this, Rob, or do I need to write them down? No, I'll send them, I'll send them to you. I'm going to contact these people. So let's see. Winner, two, three, four. Must follow at... Hypercycle underscore AI. At Jerry V. Hall one. Twitter tweet count, can I release a month? Please tweet. Yeah, I'll do that. Okay. This was not put out too long ago. So let's see if we get four winners. Oh my God. There's a lot of people. 61. All right. Can, can you me? send me that list? I can draw it right now. Oh, okay. Okay. Let's do it. I've never seen this before. This is cool. Oh, AI Nema, you were so close, but you weren't following Hypercycle. Congratulations, Crypto Bytes, Rick Alba, Aaron Usan, and Jason M. I'm going to DM you guys directly. So uh, I will introduce you to Jerry, and he'll give you those 50 Hypercycle tokens. And we go from Right there. on. Thank you. That is cool. Yeah, all right. Easy stuff. Twitter picker actually works now again. All right, everybody. So that's it for today. So look, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing. You're going to talk about it. it Definitely time sensitive. And then as a reminder, you can find everything out about HyperCycle. There's a link in the description. You can follow Jerry. And then of course the tweet that we talked about where we took a look at the shenanigans that were going on behind the scenes, there was a link directly to that. And you can scrutinize that and pour over it and all those great things.